check if the cabinet is fitted with a cable management tray. If so, note its depth, and if required, secure the toe plate bar in the correct position in accordance with the depth of the cable management tray. Make sure all three screws are tightened securely, as shown. Offer the scoots unit up to the load. Close the valve on the jack by turning the thumb screw in a clockwise direction until fully tightened. Pump the jack handle to raise the toe plate to the position 1 indicator as marked on the frame of the scoots unit. Push the scoots unit towards the load and ensure the toe plate is inserted between the transportation pallet and the middle of the underside of the data enclosure. Ensure that the toe plate bar is located behind the data enclosure chassis. If necessary, use the jack to raise the toe plate slightly to engage the toe plate bar securely behind the chassis plate. Check. Ensure that the scoots unit is centered within the width of the load and that the nylon runners are in line with the frame uprights of the data enclosure. Fit both bottom adjustable clips to the scoots unit by hooking them around the frame upright of the data enclosure and inserting the tang on the clip into the slot on the scoots unit. Once fitted, push the locking mechanism into place. Clamp the scoots unit to the data enclosure frame by turning the black handwheel on the rear of the adjustable clips in a clockwise direction. Tip. Notched marker points on the top face of each adjustable clip should act as a guide depending upon the depth of the cable management tray fitted. Fit both top adjustable clips as per the previous steps. Repeat all previous steps for the scoots unit on the opposite side of the load. Final checks before attempting to raise the load. Ensure that the toe plates are fully inserted underneath the frame of the data enclosure. Check that all adjustable clips are locked tightly against the frame of the data enclosure. Ensure outriggers are correctly fitted and locked into place. Make sure the wheels on the outriggers are making contact with the floor on all four corners whilst not actually jacking the load off the floor. Use the pump handles on the jacks to lift the load and obtain minimum clearance from the pallet. Lift evenly and at the same rate at both ends, making sure the load remains horizontal at all times. Stop when the load reaches the position 2 indicator as marked on the frame of the scoots unit. Wind down the safety backup nut until it sits tightly against the top of the cross member on the scoots unit. Carefully push the load sideways and away from the transportation pallet. Check that the floor underneath the load is free from obstacles. Warning, crushing injury risk. Personnel to be situated behind the scoots units before continuing to the next step. When operators are ready to lower the load, unwind the safety backup nut to the top of its range of travel. Release the jack valves at both ends slowly and at the same rate in order to lower the load evenly. Stop when the load reaches the position 3 indicator as marked on the frame of the scoots unit. Loads should always have a minimum ground clearance of 3 quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters for maximum safety in transit. Wind down the safety backup nut until it sits tightly against the top of the cross member on the scoots unit. Push the load towards the final installed destination, being careful to negotiate any obstacles on the way. Warning! Avoid negotiating gradients without a prior risk assessment. Once you've arrived at the final install area, make sure the load is immediately in line with the final install position. The data enclosure frame can be installed by either slotting it into a vacant position between existing data enclosures, or it can be installed immediately beside an already sighted data enclosure. Installation procedures vary slightly depending on the situation. Maneuvering the load into its final installation position.
Remove the outrigger and all four adjustable clips from the leading scoots unit. Note, when the load is being installed beside an already sighted data enclosure, for example on the end of a row, only the two adjustable clips from the leading scoots unit on the closed side need to be removed. Push the load into the install area, ensuring that the wheels on the scoots unit are tracking in line to avoid contact with the seismic floor plates. Ensure that the trailing end of the load is positioned approximately 15 inches or 40 centimeters proud of the front seismic floor plate and thereby short of the rear seismic floor plate by the same distance. When operators are ready to lower the load, unwind the safety backup nut to the top of its range of travel. Lower the load fully to the floor by releasing the jack valve slowly on both ends of the load at the same rate. Remove the leading scoots unit. Remove the four adjustable clips from the trailing scoots unit and remove the scoots unit. Push the load into its final install position on the casters fitted to the data enclosure. Transportation of the scoots units in pairs and without a load. Fit the outriggers to the scoots unit, rotating the handles until they're locked down tight. Make sure the threads are inserted cleanly through the helix to avoid damage to the threads. Hook the removable red colored U-clips over the top of each handle to lock them in position as shown. Position both scoots units to face one another. Whilst angling it backward slightly, move one of the scoots units so that its toe plate slides over the top of the other and both units nest together. There are four transport straps. The straight straps are fitted into the top brackets of the scoots units. The straps with the bend are fitted to the bottom brackets of the scoots units. Tip. You may require a colleague to assist you by keeping the scoots units upright and together whilst the straps are fitted. Open the jack valve on the scoots unit that has the upper toe plate and close the jack valve on the scoots unit with the lower toe plate. Pump the jack handle on the scoots unit that has the lower toe plate to raise both units to a height of approximately 2 inches or 50 millimeters off the floor. Ensure that all adjustable clips are attached to both scoots units before departing.